Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on biogeography and other aspects of geography as well. So in this session, we are going to learn about a very interesting concept which is about a fusion of agriculture with forestry. So it's called social forestry and also agroforestry as being part of it. So what is this social forestry all about? What is this society doing with forestry part, right? How they are fused together and what are its various types, various branches and especially agroforestry and its implementation. So we are going to discuss it all. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So after we discussed in last lecture about the problems of deforestation and its conservation measure, remember one of the conservation measure was about social forestry and agroforestry. So in today's session, let's understand in details what is this social and agroforestry. So first, let's look at this particular flow diagram, which can be useful for your answer writing as well. So under social forestry, we have three parts. One is called rural forestry, one is called urban forestry, and one is essentially a farm based forestry. Right. So under rural forestry also we have something called community forestry and agroforestry. So this is where social and agroforestry are linked to rural forestry. That's important to understand. Now let's go to the definitions and the concept. So social forestry is basically what it is a management and development of forest with afforestation practice on barren lands. Now remember this is important that barren lands or degraded lands are being agraded now right to achieve environmental benefit and rural development together so this social forestry is an initiative of government as well as including local people that's important so the term was first used by national commission on agriculture government of india in 1976 and remember 1976 was the time period where the entire world started thinking about environment environmentalism was prominent right right from 1972 stockholm conference Right. So in 1976, we also started with this particular social forestry. Right. So it was then that India embarked upon a social forestry project with aim of taking the pressure off the forest and making use of all unused and fallow lands. So the idea is to use it to actually A grade those degraded lands. That's the important aspect when we talk about social forestry or agroforestry for that matter. That let's understand and use these unused or fallow lands by actually planting trees over them. Right? So that's important. Now let's elaborate further more. So what happened? Government forest areas that are close to human settlement and have been degraded for over years right and they are not used for any human activity they needed to be afforested that was the reason behind the social forestry so trees were to be planted in and around all those agricultural fields plantation of trees along railway lines road sites so if you travel by railway or if you travel by road you'll find so many plantations alongside right so this is an initiative right from 1970s that was coming in and river and canal banks were also carried out so they were planted in accordance with government plan as well as the community understanding of common land, right? So government wasteland and panchayat land were converted into forests by community plantation. So if you can see in this particular image, you'll find that this started happening, right? Now government also extended incentives so that more and more people could join, right? Incentives that the planting sapling would be cared and maintained. Initially, government encouraged free distribution of many species right and it was called usufruct species which is having a common ownership the word usufruct if you observe here carefully it is coming from latin word usus and fructus so use and enjoy so it's like a common property for all those kind of resources like planting a mango tree or a jamun tree or a banana tree or you know huge amount of uh, those particular flowering trees where people can utilize for their own purpose so they feel that it is my own resource so all those things which were under use of fruit, common species ownership. So you'll find lots of fruit bearing trees as well under this species. So this program was launched as a mass mobilization program and its intention was to involve the common people. That's why social forestry, right? So that's important to understand. Now comes the benefit of social forestry that how it benefits. Let's understand, right? So first important point is it is supposed to diversify non farm options. Remember, Farm options are related mostly to agriculture and horticulture. But what about the tree plantation of plants other than farm options? So it aimed to diversify non-crop income options for poor farmers and landless laborers, right? An alternative 
to the social realm of India, that was important. And it was also designed to ensure better land use. Now here, land use was very important because it also leads to environmental balance, right? So where wasteland was encroached by the forestry plantation, that was important. Then, program was supposed to be one of the initiatives under a forestation scheme, under Government of India scheme. And remember, its objective was of increasing farming area of India to meet the total target area of 33% forest area. So according to our national forest policy, what we have to do is to increase our forest land to 33%. And that's where the social forestry also contributes. Apart from this, this program became part of wasteland development management, right? So that's important that no more wasteland, whatever wasteland or degraded land is there, utilize it, utilize all those slopes of those particular mountains which are degraded and by planting trees to make these slopes stabilize as well, reduce soil erosion, reduce particular gully erosion, right? So that is what was the aim. Then, with introduction of this scheme of government, formally recognized local communities and gave them rights to forest resources. And that was very much important to integrate these local communities. That's how this is called social forestry, where integration of the society with forestry is important, right, to better management of the natural resource. So natural resource management, if you study, Every time you'll find there is a community participation as the core of it. Natural resources cannot be managed just by government agencies unless they involve people participation, community participation. So social forestry was one of the schemes which actually involved lots of local people and gave them rights to the forest, gave them usufruct species which they could utilize for their own selves. Right. So that was important point to remember under the benefits of social forestry. And then there are certain shortcomings as well that you must understand because as an aspirant where you're writing answers, you must know the pros and cons of any system. That's important. Why? Because there are certain questions which will ask you critically elaborate, critically evaluate. For that, you must know the positive as well as negatives. Right. So what are the shortcomings you must understand and look at the list here. Although social forestry as a concept was revolutionary, as it sounds, but in India, it was not too much successful. What were the reasons? Let's understand. What happened? Wrong implementation on the ground was the major issue, the major problem. Why? Because under incentive given to farmers and villagers to encourage social forestry, implementation actually lost on ground because there was lots of corruption and lots of ground level issues. Many farmers opted for diverting agricultural land to forestry initially. But what happened? In the process, they compromised their agricultural prospect as well. And many times it led to the problem of food security. Because most of the land, if you convert into forest, where will you do agriculture? And farmers did not understand this initially. Later on, they were having these issues, right? So that also happened in many areas. Then, although programs suggested use of fruit species, but because of lack of ecological understanding, training, lack of specific directive, most of the plantation opted for eucalyptus in India. And remember what happens. Eucalyptus is a tree that drains out water from land. So marshy areas or where you have water alongside highways, those areas are fine. But if you plant eucalyptus on your land, which is arable land, it makes that land degraded land in time. Why? Because it absorbs lots of moisture, lots of water, right? And people did not have that knowledge. They just planted lots of eucalyptus wherever they found. So this eucalyptus plantation led to lots of issues and lots of problems on the ground in many areas in India. So people did not have that knowledge. People did not have that level of training. Right. So that was the shortcoming majorly that was related to this particular program of social forestry. Right. So if you observe this particular table, you have type of administration and you have type of activity. So if you observe social forestry as a component of other projects, what are the important activities under this? You can look here. Seedling distribution, watershed protection, protection of agricultural lands, that is soil protection, fuel wood forestry component of rural development project. So this is four important activity that is carried under social forestry as a component of other projects. That's most important. Then direct forestry department planting with no village cooperation, which is not part of it. There you have majorly watershed protection, right? Urban or small town tree, pole plantations, shelter belt plantations, which do not involve much of village cooperation. Right. They are part of direct plantations. Right. 
so that important so direct planting by forestry department with village cooperation again includes village wood lots plantation of school ground remember many school plantation drives have been carried and fuel wood and forestry as a component of rural development projects and then there were or multi purpose projects right where you have included all these important points right from seedling to fuel wood to general plantation for local usage some sacred groves as well right but majorly if you observe for social forestry these are the points or these are the major activities that were involved that's important to remember then comes the other aspects that we studied right under social forestry we have three major parts one of them is called farm forestry the name itself is related to a farm specific forestry right so under farm forestry if you observe in this particular flow diagram we have homestead we have peripheral planting we have block planting and we have agroforestry so at present in almost all the countries where social forestry programs have been taken up both commercially and non commercially farm forestry is being promoted in one form or the other why because individual farmers who have huge farms they can utilize their land for forestry so individual farmers are being encouraged to plant trees on their own farmland in many areas this tradition of growing trees on farmland already exist by the way right so non commercial farm forestry is the main thrust of most of the social forestry project because if it is commercial eventually they'll cut it down again right so non commercial farm forestry is more important and they may want it to provide shade for agricultural crops as well wind shelters as well soil conservation or to utilize their waste land present in their farms so this is on the basis of individual farmers that is what we say as farm forestry right so important is here the farm size that's very much important right now understand the urban forestry the second part of social forestry in urban areas right if you look into this diagram of urban areas now all the cities are on the verge of becoming green cities recently paris has also decided to completely revamp the city right the new models are coming up so urban forestry is one of the major aspects in the world and in india as well so it is raising and management of trees on private or publicly owned lands in the urban centers that's important urban forestry includes what management of individual as well as groups of trees that's important even a single tree has to be managed also a group of tree has to be managed then urban forestry is also not restricted to trees that have been planted right but also the pre existing the natural vegetation as well and many urban trees have been established naturally although in an environment in which competition for land is high they are unlikely to survive long unless actively cultivated and managed so this is another issue that in certain areas lots of competition for land is there so you have to take management steps for that where you don't cut trees right so urban forestry also includes the management of forest at urban fringe not just in the city core but in the fringes the outskirts of the city so urban forestry you can observe in whichever city you are there you can see that what level of urban forestry is there and you can give your own examples from different cities right from delhi from chennai from mumbai from kolkata the metropolis or the lower tier cities in india you can give certain examples that what are the level of urban forestry that is being done by the government including local people or without including them so you can look into that then we have something called rural forestry as the third part and under rural forestry we have the divisions one is called community forestry that the word itself is community so we are using commune rural people the rural communities for raising of trees for farm forestry right that is the program and government has responsibility of providing what the facilities like seedlings fertilizers and there are many soil ph measurement centers or mobile vans also right and the responsibility of protecting the trees is given to the community that's important then some communities manage the plantation sensibly and in sustainable manner so that village continues to enjoy the benefits and some others take advantage as well they sell timbers for short term individual profit that is also being observed under rural forestry and a community forestry and common property resource cpr as we say right common land being everybody's land is very easy to exploit right because everybody has an equal right on that so that's important to understand under community forestry right then comes the agroforestry the next part of rural forestry the word is agro and then forestry so agroforestry is simply defined as land use system which integrates tree plantation shrub plantation on farm lands and rural landscapes to enhance few important points one is productivity one is product profitability and diversity of ecosystem that's important and then sustainability so these are the words key words associated with agroforestry that you do agriculture 
and also plant forest. So if you observe this particular diagram, you see all these cash crops apart from all these particular plantations being done, right? So it combines forestry with what? With production of multiple outputs, with protection of resource base, places emphasis on use of multiple indigenous variety of trees and shrubs. That's important. Then particularly it is suitable for low input conditions and fragile environment. Right? That's also important to understand that where environment is very fragile, where it can be destroyed easily, there this kind of particular forestry is important and it involves interplay of both socio-cultural values more than any other land use system. So in accordance with socio-cultural values it is being taken up. That's very important to understand here and it is structurally and functionally more complex than monoculture. It's not like monoculture, right? It's like not common species plantation and agriculture. It's like different, 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 different indigenous varieties plantation in accordance with the socio-cultural norms. That's why this is an important part of rural forestry. And then what we need to learn here is benefits of agroforestry system. So first is environmental benefit. That is where we are looking into in biogeography and environmental geography. Reduction of pressure on natural forest, nutrient recycling, reducing service runoff, increasing the soil nutrient, improving soil structure, as well as also sequestering the carbon. That's important in terms of environmental benefit. Then comes economic benefit. Obviously, we are integrating environment and economy together in this model. So economic benefit is also as important, right? For food, fuel, wood, fodder, fertilizer, timber. This is where you draw your economy from, right? So even if there is a total crop failure, people have alternatives because they have planted trees which would fetch them all these facilities, right? So that is important. An increase in levels of farm income. So farm income can be doubled or at least they can be increased using this model. That's important point. And agroforestry has a significant potential to provide employment as well. That's the most important aspect in terms of economy, if you observe. So rural and urban population can get into the production aspect, into the industrial aspect and utilize it for their job, right? Current estimates show what 65% of the country's timber requirement is met from trees grown on farms in India, right? So that is important in terms of what you see the current estimate in India and agroforestry also generates employment opportunity and many times it is combined with the community, the common property resources and those schemes which are employment schemes like the Manrega schemes, they are integrated together, right? So that's also important to remember here. Then comes the last social benefits, the third aspect of this particular forestry. So social aspect, if you observe, it is about improvement of living standards in rural areas with higher income, sustained employment, then also giving nutrition and health facilities. Quality of life basically also means health as well, food as well, right? So stabilization and improvement of communities through this elimination of all these particular shifting of farm sites and activities in a new way. So through elimination of the need to shift sites of farm activities, right? So remember, job opportunity, economic development, environment development, regional sufficiency, all these are the four pillars of social forestry, if you can observe in this particular diagram. So that is important to remember and quote while you're writing your answer. So now, when we have discussed in details the social forestry, the scheme in its totality, the flaws of it, the major aspects which are related to environmental ecological balance with it, now it's time to learn about the last part of biogeography in the coming session that is related to gene pool centers. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep learning.